Hey guys, and welcome to my video tutorial series. The goal of this series will be to show a basic overview on how to create a virtual network and how to install Windows Server and some Windows Server roles. We will be dealing with roles such as Active Directory, Windows Deployment, Windows Update, and Remote Desktop Services. In this particular video, I will be showing how to set up a software firewall so that our entire virtual network is isolated from my real home network. This will give us the freedom to play with firewall rules without affecting anything that is actually live in my home. And gives everyone who is watching this video a chance to follow along, since I'm not going to be using anything uh, specific, like a sonic wall. We're all going to be using software, Sophos, that is free to download. Please note that this video does not cover the basics of what a virtual machine is, what Hyper-V is, or how to install it, and uh, I'm assuming a pretty basic uh, level of networking knowledge. And keep in mind that I'm myself by no means an expert in the area, I'm just someone who likes to tinker and play around. So I might make mistakes and uh, feel free to point them out, I'm always open to learn something new myself. Uh, with that being said, let's begin this tutorial. I'm going to be following along my blog posting on uh, my website, georgebabichev.com. And uh, the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're actually going to want to go ahead and download uh, that Sophos UTM firewall. It's a uh, free for home uh, thing to download, and you can do that by clicking the link in my blog. And I'll also post the link on my YouTube video. Uh, just make sure that you download the UTM v9 software appliance. You don't have to register, just when you click download it's going to prompt you for some basic registration. You could, you know, put fake data into that, it doesn't really matter. Anyways, I'm going to be using a slightly older version because it's mostly the same for our particular use case. Alright, now go ahead and open up your um, virtual machine management. In my particular case, I will be using Hyper-V because it's free and it comes with my uh, version of Windows 10. First things first, we're going to create two virtual switches. We're going to create a external switch which is connected to my uh, networking card. It's I've already created it, I've just called it Ethernet WAN. Then we're going to create a another uh, switch. It's going to be a private network and I've actually already done it here, but if you are not sure, you can just select New Virtual Switch. We're going to select Private. What that means is that virtual machines that are attached to that private uh, switch will only be able to communicate with each other. They will not be able to communicate with the host. This is going to be important for us. So we're, let's select uh, Create Virtual Switch. I'm going to call it Lab LAN. Okay, I'm going to apply that change. Now that we have two virtual switches created, and please excuse the third one here, internal LAN is the one that I'm using uh, for my personal testing, we're going to have Ethernet WAN and Lab LAN. Okay? Let's go ahead and create a new virtual machine, and now we're going to be installing the Sophos uh, firewall. It's a Linux-based firewall, so uh, I'm going to call it Lab SW1. So what we're going to want to do is create a Generation 1 virtual machine for maximum compatibility with Linux. I'm going to give it 2 gigs of RAM. I'm not going to be using dynamic memory. And I'm going to attach it to the lab uh, local area network. I'm going to give it a 20 gig disk. And I'm going to be selecting it on, on version 9.405, but like I said, the version doesn't really matter. I'm going to go ahead and open up that virtual machine, and before I start it, I'm actually going to modify it. I'm going to add our second network adapter. So I'm going to go ahead and select Add Hardware, Network Adapter, and I'm going to select uh, Ethernet WAN. The idea is that the firewall will be able to take uh, the WAN interface, which is basically the actual internet that my host has. It's going to be able to then take the other network, which is the internal network, and it's going to be able to translate that. So my virtual machines will be able to access the internet, but my home uh, machine will not be able to access that network. This is going to be good because this is going to give us like an enterprise uh, kind of feeling because uh, if you install Windows Server in a regular uh, virtual machine and you say you want to configure Active Directory, you're actually messing around with your home network, and I'm just going to want to avoid that completely by separating that and putting it on its own testing network. That way I can do whatever I want with it, I can give it any IP address uh, convention that I want, and it doesn't matter, it doesn't affect me at all. So now I'm going to go ahead and start this. 
we'll just pick the defaults. And essentially, we're going to be picking mostly the defaults here. Uh, let's do start. I'm located in the uh, United States, so I'm going to select uh, US for the time zone, English USA, and the area is America for me, Los Angeles. My host clock is not UTC since I'm running on Windows. And this is important. This is asking us which interface we'll be using to access the web admin user interface. In this case, we're going to be selecting EF0 because that was the first network adapter that was added uh, to this virtual machine. What that means is that from all other virtual machines on this network, I can access the web admin interface. Okay, so we're going to select next. I'm going to give it a address of 192.168.2.1, the subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. In the gateway, we're just going to leave blank for now. So let's select next. Um, it's saying that so my virtual machine is a 64-bit, so do I want to install a 64-bit kernel? Sure. Uh, it's asking us if I want to install all... Uh, what is this even asking? Open source software package without any of the star tools. Uh, sure, well, why not? Let's install everything. It's going to ask us if we want to erase the disk. Sure, why not? Okay, and at this point, we're just going to wait for this to complete, and I'm going to pause the video. All right, so it looks like the installation has finished. As you can see, we can access the admin interface on 192.168.2.1, uh, port 4444. Now, as you can understand, this uh, IP address is on our internal network, which means that only this virtual machine at the moment can access that IP address, which is to us kind of useless. So to actually manage this Sophos, we're going to need to install another virtual machine uh, and configure it from there. For now, I'm just going to go ahead and select Reboot and wait for it to come back up. And then we'll move on to uh, part two of this lab and that will be in the next video.